All right, so let's do this particular question together. And by now, I believe that you have some idea about what we discussed in the in the in the previous session regarding the the structuring of solar system and uh, the 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 orbital motion of the planets around solar system. So we kind of derived the Kepler's law, which kind of states that the planets revolve around the uh, sun and uh, elliptical paths called orbits. So so having that particular understanding, let's dive into this question. This question is like. It's pretty basic, but uh, this question has a couple of terms, which if you're not really familiar with, you kind of be a bit confused. So uh, I, I believe you have the basic understanding which we had in the previous session. So with that, let's dig into this question. Let's see what this question says in the first place. What is the angle made by the plane of equinoctial with the plane of ecliptic? All right, so let's make the big part here. I'm just trying to draw a diagram of the Earth straight away. Now, I would highly recommend you to have the diagrams drawn nice and steady, pretty big. So even after repeated assessments, I find that uh, you guys don't, don't really draw diagrams. And even, even if you draw a diagram, it's going to be very, very tiny. You kind of squeeze things in. And after 10 days, when you look back at the diagram, you have no idea what you just drew. All right, so try to make diagram as big as possible. And I would probably argue on the statement that we don't have time to draw diagrams for the exam. You would definitely won't have one if you draw if you're drawing the diagrams for the first time uh, when you sit for the exams. Try drawing the diagrams as you practice, and I bet you when you go for the exam, you do have a pen and paper available for navigation, and you kind of can draw a very very quick diagram. Not just for this particular question, most of the concepts in navigation, meteorology, uh, and um, your technical kind of needs uh, diagrammatic. Uh, interpretation. So for so subjects like MET, you probably won't be able to have a paper, but if you have drawn it well, uh, while you practice it, you probably can actually uh, visualize it better. All right, so let's get back to this question. Uh, so we, let's draw the Earth to start with. So in the previous class, as we have discussed, uh, the the uh, the Earth actually accommodates an elliptical path around the, around the Sun, just like any other uh, planets. So having that understanding, let me quickly draw the orbital plane. So when I draw this orbital plane, I have this kind of uh, uh, very steady idea that you do know what an orbital plane is because we kind of explained in the last class. All right, so this is the uh, orbital plane. All right, let's put it straight here. Right, and we also know that Earth has a vertical axis. Uh, sorry, correction. It has a vertical, uh, we, we kind of drew a vertical a line, a kind of what we call as a normal to this particular orbital plane. So let's place that here straight. Perfect. That's there. Now, this is what we kind of explained in the previous class primarily, uh, which is talking about the axis of rotation of the Earth. And we know that the axis of the Earth is inclined at a particular angle of 23 and a half degrees with the normal axis this is something which you already know and i believe that you have an idea about it at the same time it is inclined at 66 and a half degrees with the orbital plane all right perfect so this is this is this is where we stopped in the previous class right so that is when one of my previous students kind of pitched in saying that this is kind of a good question to kind of re-emphasize uh, so why don't you do it which is just perfectly fine because uh, even I do believe that this question is kind of a bit tricky, uh, not because it's kind of out of the basic knowledge, uh, just because of a couple of terms that has been used in this particular uh, particular question. If you're not really sure about what this equinoctial elliptical plane is, you probably might kind of fumble and go with the wrong answers. All right, so 20 and a half degrees, 66 and a half degrees. And we have also seen in the previous class how these are connected to your Tropic of Cancer, Capricorn, uh, the, the special small circles that we have. All right, perfect. Now, let's get a bit more into this particular diagram. So if I kind of draw the equator, so you, so having understood that this is the North Pole, and to be very specific, it is a true North, a geographic North, and this is true South, and we know the Earth is kind of rotating in the anti-clockwise direction, just trying to put some extra details into the diagram. Uh, let me get rid of the rotation, because it's not required here. All right, let me just uh, quickly draw the equator here so since the poles are kind of inclined or the polar uh, this axis is kind of inclined uh, the equator has to be here and what equator are we looking at we're looking at the geographic uh, geographic equator all right so before we actually move into this uh, figure again let's let's very quickly get into um, a different diagram 
right? So let's draw the Earth again. Now, I want you to actually imagine a plane. So we have just drawn the equator, right? I'm just kind of taking the same diagram back from here all the way straight here. I'm just kind of, kind of assuming a plane that kind of embraces the equator, right? So uh, this, this knowledge is definitely going to help you when we talk about the chapters like time and stuff. When we talk about a plane, if you can assume a plane here, let me just quickly draw that. Yeah, so we have kind of considered a plane that can cut the earth into two parts or kind of halves, you can see. All right, so this particular plane is passing through the equator. This is the equator over here. And since the plane is kind of passing through the equator, this plane is what is called as the plane of equinoctial. Right, so equi, the term equi uh, is quite familiar to us. And if you are not really familiar, you will eventually get familiarized with this, especially the chapter called time, where we talk about equal days, equal nights and stuff. So basically, it is connected to equator, all right? So this is what is called as a plane of equinoctial. It is an extended plane of the equator, all right? So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to exactly consider the same plane, but I'm not going to draw the entire plane here because we are looking at a at a two-dimensional figure here, more like a 2D figure. And therefore, I will put the same thing in the form of a line that is kind of passing through the equator. So it's just an extension of the equator out into space. Now, this particular knowledge is quite helpful for you, especially when we talk about declination of sun and seasons and stuff, again, uh, referring to a chapter called time. Uh, so let's bring this concept again here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw that plane that is cutting the earth along the equator. And we just named this plane as the equinoctial plane or plane of equinoctial. All right, wonderful. I hope you're actually catching up with me. So we kind of defined one of the terms that is given in the question, which is the plane of equinoctial. All right, now what we have left is the plane of ecliptic. All right, let's get back to the figure again, the, the previous figure which we just considered. All right, perfect. Now, uh, let me just uh, draw another diagram straight here so we have we have the sun at the at the at the not the center but kind of a foci uh, so we we kind of derived that in the previous class as well so we know that the earth and all of the planets revolve around the sun in elliptical orbits right so let me just draw that in the first place so it's kind of an ellipse straight here all right perfect now let me draw the sun uh, the mighty sun is kind of somewhere somewhere around here all right perfect and then we have our earth which I'm, I'm just trying it somewhere here, over here. All right. Now, this is the particular plane that we just discussed as the um, equinoctial. Uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so this is the particular plane which we just discussed as the uh, orbital plane. All right. Now, uh, you know the, about the eclipse, right? Eclipse hap happens when the sun, moon and the earth kind of lines itself up the shadow of, of one masking the other. Right. So that actually happens when uh, the orientation of the planet and the satellite and the sun kind of aligns up along the orbital plane. Right. So this is the uh, this is the orbital plane. Right. And therefore, it is the same orbital plane, which is otherwise called as the plane of ecliptic right so now we have another knowledge about what plane of ecliptic is we already saw what plane of equinoctial is so orbital plane is also called as the uh, plane of ecliptic all right perfect now that's it we have kind of defined the terms that is alien to us in the question one of which being plane of ecliptic and the other is plane of equinoctial just to re-emphasize that plane of equinoctial is just an extension of the equator out into space and plane of ecliptic is nothing but the orbital plane now, if you have these two ideas straight in you then this question is just like a piece of cake now let's see the angles again because what they're asking is what is the angle made by the plane of equinoctial which is which is right here with the plane of ecliptic, which is which is right here. So we kind of try to find out the angle that is between plane of equinoctial and plane of ecliptic. All right, let's find out. They are asking nothing but this particular angle here. 
All right, so they're kind of reaching that angle. So the previous class, we kind of saw the 23 and a half and 66 and a half degree angles, right? And we also know that this particular angle that is made by the normal axis with the plane of uh, ecliptic or orbital plane is 90 degree because we have actually considered a normal axis, right? And that is how we define the polar axis, which is the axis of rotation of the Earth. Perfect. Now this being 90, or probably this being 90 again, you can very well understand that this particular angle, right, has to be 66 and a half degrees, right? Because this particular angle is, is 90 degrees, this is also 90 degrees, so you can see that this angle also should be 90 degrees, and once that is 90 degrees, then this being 23.5, this has to be 66 and a half degrees. Alright, so I hope you are definitely catching up with me. If you have questions, definitely drop in the chat. I'll get back to you on that. And once this is known to be 66 and a half degrees, now it's just very, very simple. We know this particular angle is 90 degree. This being 66 and a half, this is 23 and a half, which is 90 minus a particular angle. That's it. That's what's asked in the question. You're asked to find out the angle between plane of equinoctial and uh, orbital plane, and that is 23. 0.5 degrees and bravo being the answer right now this question as i said is not difficult as such uh, the basics is quite fine for you to answer this unless you know the terms uh, plane of equinoctial and plane of ecliptic all right so i hope this particular question uh, is quite clear to you we have a few of diagrams as well you can just uh, see to it as well all right if you have questions do let me know in the chat i'll get back to you all right i'm kind of leaving this question straight away with you while i'm trying to discuss a particular question from uh, from uh, departure which again i got as a pop-up right now in the chat so let's uh, get back to that particular uh, question 